Chief. Good morning, everybody. Am I audible? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Uh, at the outset, uh, I must thank uh, Dr. Rangaba sir, Dr. Ajit K sir, and whole organizing team of JIX 2022 for inviting me here. And uh, today I am going to discuss about something which is, I think, uh, in the ICU we don't pay that much of attention. Maybe the brilliant people like you do, but most of the intensivists, they don't feel that roots of enteral feeding is also one of the most important thing that need to be taken care of. With that background, I have no conflict of interest. And first, to start with, why this type of topic in a conference of JICS where we need to discuss about so many important aspects of critical care? Maybe it's not a, a nutritionist or dietitian conference, but I would prove or I would like uh, give a reasonable answer with my next picture. For us, maybe if we are not smart enough, the picture on the right side and the picture on the left side almost equally taken care of. Malnutrition, malnutrition. And the same thing also applies to root X, root Y in the enteral feeding. So that I need to be making clarified for all of the intensivists, the budding intensivists that they have to take care while they are prescribing or following of the chart or like taking the proper nutritional status assessment of their patients in the ICU. So it's not only for the survival that we need to make it very clear from the very first instance. So the objective of my presentation for next 12 minutes or 13 minutes, we need to first focus on the or maybe revisit the different routes of enteral feeding that we all know. I am not talking anything new. Maybe I need to revisit or re-emphasize the important routes or the importance of the different routes of enteral feeding. Second point, we would definitely understand the advantages and the disadvantages. The malnutrition, malnutrition. That would be the picture that will be clarified in my slides. And the final one, would be the take home message for all of us. So let's start the uh, discussion flow. So this picture in one slide will give you the total like uh, what I can say the concept of different routes of enteral feeding. First one is continuous, the picture itself. The second one is cyclic, continuous is 24 by 7. Cyclic will be from 8 to 24 hours and that has to be given through a feeding pump maybe that is through the gravity mechanism or through our mechanical volumetric pump. The third one will be intermittent and intermittent I want to like emphasize it would be for 20 to 60 minute interval and that would be given for every 4 to 6 hour interval with or without again your supporting feeding pump or your gravity bag. The fourth one will be given through a syringe pump, syringe, glass syringe or maybe with a plunger that I would be discussing in detail. And that would be given over short time, maybe 10 to 15 minutes time. Definitely it has to be through dripping method or the syringe method. Now, if we would go through this picture, that would give you the nutrient concentration as well as the administration rate. And you can pretty well see here, the continuous feed will be throughout the whole day and night. While the cycling feeding will be from like 8 to 24 hours, intermittent feeding will be at the regular intervals, but it will be definitely having the concentration would be a little bit more and the time duration will be again more. And while we are discussing about bolus feeding, it will be definitely for 10 to 20 minutes maximum and it would be at regular interval more numbers. Now, it's not only about that we are giving feeding and the patient is absorbing that has definite impact on the circadian rhythm of the physiology, the metabolism as well as the energetic that we need to know and here comes that picture. This is a very interesting picture from the annual uh, review of the nutrition in 2017 published while you can see here in the wake or feeding status you can see there are many things happening while when we are sleeping or we are fasting. There are also many things happening here in the night time. So these are also having impact on the route 
how we are actually providing nutrition to our critical ill patients though the patient is looking like a sedated paralyzed having hemodynamic compromise but still these things are also very important to also notice for the intensivist who are maybe i will say has better like uh, knowledge about this uh, physiology as well as the energetics in the patient so you can go through this like uh, what are the things happening in the wake or feeding status as well as the sleep or fasting state now coming to the continuous this will be the like how we are giving the feeding 25 to 7 we can give through your like uh, the feeding pump by the gravity mechanism and also this is through the mechanical pump you can see here and you can also give like you no know, bolus water also so that the feeding will be delivered along with adequate wa water amount so this is the picture that depicts the continuous what are the indications of continuous feeding that is to promote the tolerance because we don't know how the patient will behave the patient is on like uh, vasopressors on ventilatory support maybe if you are giving bolus feeding the patient may not tolerate there will be reflux or aspiration chances now also in compromised gastric function when we are feeding to the small bowel post pyloric feeding definitely we cannot give bolus feeding or intermittent maybe we need to give through small like continuous feeding with small amount volume the fourth one when we are not getting tolerance to other feeding methods maybe we have to go ahead with the continuous method so the advantages and disadvantages if i want to like make it one picture may improve the tolerance may reduce risk of aspiration in drowsy patients in like the no patients who are neuromuscularly having some problem or maybe we need to give some time for the nutrient absorption maybe the thumbs up for this type of for like indications definitely the thumbs down will be when we are starting with continuous continuous process we need to give by feeding feeding pump and that is one again in the uh, resource limited centric maybe we don't get this type of uh, like mechanical pump it will re definitely restrict the ambulation and that is one of the limiting factor in like the patients who are like they want to be ambulated and also it is more expensive continue like the next will be cyclic again we can see here it will be less than 24 hours definitely again through the mechanical way feeding pump or gravity method the advantages if you want to summarize in one slide maximizes the mobility and activity throughout the day can avoid the feeling of fullness because one of the limitation of continuous method as we are giving continuously the patient will have some like amount of like not getting the full volume of feeding so that is one of the limitation of continuous uh, method now for the cyclic method definitely it can avoid that limitation and also low maintenance for the nursing staff coming to the disadvantages still we are not giving for 24 hours but we are still giving for 8 to 24 hours maybe almost 16 hours so that is again like a long duration and then there has to be a higher feeding rate and some patients may not tolerate that coming to the intermittent method it is very physiological compared to the continuation as well as cyclic method intermittent method more closely aligns with heart, how we actually take our feeding like 8 am 400 ml 12 pm 400 ml 4 pm 400 ml something like that that will replicate the normal physiology and again it will decrease the clogging and decrease the bacterial growth because we are if you are giving through continuous method maybe there is chance of bacterial growth in the feeding so it infused over 20 to 6 60 minutes 3 to 6 time per day now what are the advantages definitely it avoids the need to provide the tube feeding overnight so at least the patient can sleep without getting the feed continuously disadvantages definitely we need to the patient need to tolerate a large amount of or volume of feeding and there is high maintenance for the nursing staff because they have to continue with the feeding for almost like 1 uh, to 2 hour or something like that coming to the continuation uh, bolus method this is the method that most closely aligns with our physiology and uh, our normal like eating pattern and you can see infused for less than 20 minutes 3 to 6 time per day and most commonly we use the catheter tip syringe method that means we take the feeding and we use it with a plunger or with the syringe tip we can just press or it can also go 
through the gravity mechanism to the ng tube and with the water we can flush that feeding so this is the normal concept behind the bolus method now indications definitely recommended for gastric feeding we cannot give through the post pyloric method or when there is compromised gastric function and definitely advantages are it is more physiological feeding pump is not required inexpensive easy to administer limits the feeding time patient is free to move about that is one of the major advantage in our current critical care practice and also the rehabilitation therapy are not compromised and more likely patient can receive all types of formula disadvantages there is increased risk of aspiration and definitely hypertonic high fat and high fiber formulas actually will be delaying the gastric emptying so that is one of the disadvantage of the bolus method and that can also result in the osmotic diarrhea so that is the most commonly like now we receive the complaint from our nurses the patient has started diarrhea after starting the bolus feeding now what the evidence says and which one is better because we need to go ahead with the evidence till now this continuous method as per the current evidence is slightly tilting above all the other three things how it is the advantages i have already told but definitely the bolus has advantages that it improves the nitrogen balance in our body and it has less oxygen consumption more energy efficient as per the trials but continuous has advantages like less chance of overweight in the post operative period less chance in the fall in the serum albumin less chance of aspiration diarrhea less chance of feed intolerance these are the major differences with the continuous method and that's the reason why evidence is more inclined towards continuous if i would be honest with you so this is one trial published in 2016 and they have taken 50 critically ill adult patients when they compared the continuous with the bolus and now you can see here there was no clinically relevant difference in the glycemic profile or the the or tube feeding volume the calorie intake and also the like you no know, nutritional delivery goals how they have actually achieved more than 80% there was no clinically significant difference as per the 2006 nice guideline you can see here for people being fed into the stomach bolus or continuous method should be considered taken account in uk also they have taken account the patient preference convenience and drug administration whether it is a resource rich setting resource limited setting on that basis also you can decide whether you want to go ahead with continuous or bolus but for people in intensive care nasogastric tube feeding should be usually or should be de uh, delivered by the continuous method as per the 2006 nice guideline for over like 16 to 24 hour daily and if insulin administration is needed it is safe and more practical to deliver the feeding oh, like the continuously over 16 to 24 hour now as for the canadian critical care guideline 2013 at that time i was in toronto in uh, st michael so i was part or like i was doing the like the patient recruitment in my center so there is insufficient data to make a recommendation on enteral feeding given continuous versus like uh, the uh, bolus method now this is the recent from the espn guideline 2019 how they have actually given the guideline there is no difference in the all the three parameters i would be making short but as for the this statement i want to quote 3.5 the question was in adult critically ill patients does intermittent enteral nutrition has an advantage over the continuous administration and they have given grade like of recommendation b with strong consensus that yes it is continuous continuous rather than bolus but aspen which is the rival of the european society the american society they are mute and this is the recent one 2022 april that is published and you can see they have told that they have not touched upon the method of root like the root of administration they have touched upon on other things but never they have taken into account which method is better so maybe the aspen guideline we would be this is the recent one 2019 and the if we are talking about evidence definitely we should go ahead with the evidence as per the aspen so in summary evidence doesn't support if we would be totally like making all the things in compiled form but post pyloric tube feeding that necessitates continuous or cyclic enteral nutrition rather than bolus or intermittent in gastric feeding impact tolerance definitely it will require continuous method 
and for medically stable patients whether you are giving continuous or intermittent or bolus that depends upon your like patient mobility convenience as well as the cost we need to see or cater all these things and enteral feeding via your continuous method has similar profile if you will talk about the energetics the insulin administration the tube feeding volume definitely there is no definite evidence which one is favoring definitely no effect on the circadian rhythm but yes as per the spen we need to go ahead with the continuous maybe maybe the uh, the practical experience or like how we are having our nursing staff what is the like you know the patient volume the the severity like scale what we are actually dealing in our icu that is also one of the important factor deciding with the continuous or the bolus method thank you